So what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a launch template. So I'm going to click on launch template to create my launch template right now. So I'm going to give it a name like uh, launch template. And I'll just give it the same name and template tags. I don't want to give any template tags or I don't want to have a source template as well. So AMI, I'm going to have the AMI Linux 2. Okay, this is the free tier that we are going to get and instance type is okay t2.micro this is the free tier one and the key pair that we already have is the ec2 key uh, that i'll use i'll have the network as the vpc itself and security group i'll have my own security group that i already had my security group instance and it stays the same volume one and instance tags i don't want to give it any instance tags right now network interface also i don't want to add it I don't want to request for a spot instance right now. There is one more setting that I wanted to do that was the user data part. So I'll copy the same information, same code that I wanted to have for my EC2. And that's it. So we'll just go ahead and create launch template. We have the launch template already created. So view launch template. So this is the launch template that I have. After creating the launch template, I can go to the auto scaling group or you can just click on this to view. So this is the AMI that you have. This is the T2 micro. The availability zone has not been set up yet. So what you can do is you can go ahead and go to the auto scaling group. Create auto scaling group. You can see here the two options that you're getting like one is the launch configuration and the other one is the launch template. So as we already created the launch template, what we can do is we can just click on this. We will choose the same launch template that we have already created and we'll click on next. So the group name, the auto scaling group name, I want to give it as, so this is my auto scaling group right now. The default version is one. I have the launch template ready and group will start with the instance one and it will have all the subnets that I want to make it highly available. Okay, that's fine. Then we'll go to the advanced details. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to receive traffic from one or more load balancer. That's what we want when we have the load balancer high availability capability in set. So I'll go and click on this one and I'll redirect all the traffic from the target group that I have. And uh, the health check type, I'll keep it to ELB, the elastic load balancer and the grace period for the health check, I will keep it at, I'll keep it at 300 seconds, uh, not a problem. Okay, so monitoring is already in place. Uh, I don't have any monitoring as of now. The basic monitoring will be done every time. So the instance protection and the service link, I don't want to give it as of now. The next thing that you want to do is you click on configure scaling policies. So you can use scaling policies as well. So use scaling policies. What you want to tell AWS uh, auto scaling groups is scale between one. This is the minimum capacity that I want and three. This is the maximum instances that I want for my auto scaling groups to scale the instances. So this will be the minimum and maximum size for your group. So this is the auto scaling group uh, size that you have. The average CPU utilization, I wanted to keep it at 40% and the instance needs around 60 seconds probably to start or to warm up after scaling. We'll not disable the scale in, so we'll leave it as it is and we'll click on configure notification. I don't want to have any notifications in place as of now. I don't want to add any tags as well. And that's the last step we had and you have all the configurations in place and you can just go ahead and create auto scaling groups. So now we have all the auto scaling groups in place. You can go ahead and view your auto scaling group or launch configurations as well. So we'll go and see this. Okay, so we have everything in place right now. So you have the launch template and uh, basically the availability zones that is spanning over three availability zones and we have the subnet details as well. The target group was first target group that we had already created. And when you go to the activity history, it has launched the new instance successfully. If we go back to the instances, we can see there is a new instance that has already started uh, to launch and we have the previous installation that we had the first, the name that was first that I had given that. And uh, if you go to the load balancers, we have our load balancer in place and the DNS name, if I want to do, I want to just copy that. I want to, this is basically now redirecting traffic from both the instances. So as you can see, it is redirecting traffic from both the instances, the one that we had created recently, the new one, and as well as the previous one as well. So this is how it works. So now, as we already know, like our load balancer is sitting in front of the auto scaling groups. And as well as, as I said, it is trying to redirect traffic from the load balancer. Okay, so now what happens is I am going to just go ahead and delete this instance that I had created. 
previously i don't want it now because this is not a part of the auto scaling group that i have created i'll just go ahead and terminate this so as we cannot have the launch instance to be like terminated based on the heavy load we cannot provide a load right now so what i'm going to do is i'm going to edit the auto scaling group policy so i'm going to basically go ahead and edit it and i am going to have my desired capacity levels as two and i want to keep the minimum as two as well so as you can see if i keep this as two it will automatically launch the same instance so if i'm going to save it and go to the activity history right now we'll just wait for a few minutes and now as the desired capacity and the minimum is two it will try to launch another one very soon let's wait for it yeah see it has started so we'll go back to the auto scaling groups once again and now go to the activity history see our new instance has been launched so this has been done automatically i didn't do anything i had just created the auto scaling group i had added the template that i wanted to and based on the template it has created a new one and the best thing about it is it will be automatically added or automatically registered to the load balancer that we have and the target group that we have so once it is launched you can see that i'll not do anything i'll just go ahead and refresh the dns that i had for the load balancer and it will switch between the nodes we'll just wait for it and we'll see the magic this is super exciting isn't it we have done a lot of things in this tutorial session and this demo but this is quite fruitful and this is really making me happy i hope it makes you happy too so let's see how it pans out now yes it is successful and we have all the instances that we wanted to have the two instances that we wanted to have and i'll go to the dns for the load balancer and see yes it is switching between the nodes the two nodes that we have and it has obviously started it so yes the two instances that we wanted to have this one and this one are both automatically scaled from the auto scaling groups so what we have done here is the first thing that we did we went and we created the launch template and then what we did is we went ahead and created the auto scaling group that we had by the configuration from the launch template itself and then that's it we did the same thing again and again and we got the result but now what i wanted to do is i'm going to go back and i want to go ahead and uh, decrease it to the minimum one so if i go back to the activity history right now it is waiting for the elb for the connection draining and it will terminate that instance so this is probably one of the most important integral part of having a highly available system. You know what is the superpower of AWS CloudWatch? It's the ability to be a consultant. <laughs> that was not a joke. Okay, so Amazon CloudWatch monitors your application or monitors your AWS resources and the applications that you run on AWS in real time. And the CloudWatch provides you with the data and actionable insights to monitor your applications, respond to system-wide performance changes, optimize your resource utilization and get us unified view of operational health. So what are the basis of the usage for CloudWatch in AWS then? So you can collect and track matrices that are variables that can act as a measure for your resources and application that you have hosted on AWS. You can also create alarms that watch metrics and send notifications in case of any fault or any specific conditions that you configure it to notify. You can automatically make changes to a resource uh, that you are monitoring when a threshold is breached. You can also monitor the usage or the CPU usage and disk reads and writes of your Amazon EC2 instances, which is basically your custom metrics. So you can also use the above data to stop underused instances to save money. That's quite effective. But the most sought after feature is that the custom metrics can be used as an auto scaling policy. Let's see how we do that. So we have our application running just fine with the web traffic going through the load balancer in place and we have our auto scaling groups in place as well to help us in case there is a heavy load. You can see that we have our CloudWatch alarm in place to monitor the situation. So what exactly happens here is we have something called the CloudWatch logs agent and the auto scaling group with the help of the CloudWatch logs agent 
provides an automated way to send log data to CloudWatch logs from the Amazon EC2 instances. Based on the queries and the metrics that it captured from the log, it makes a decision. And then the CloudWatch events will be sent to trigger a scaling policy. And the auto scaling policy will ensure we have our instances in place. So at last, when the instances pass the health check, they are added behind the ELB or the load balancer and start serving requests like all other instances in your service. This is pretty much all that you need to know about the way the auto scaling group works with the CloudWatch. Now moving on. So let's quickly recap on the topics that we have learned so far. This is for the exam. So please don't sleep over this one. So auto scaling groups are free. You pay for the underlying resources that you use. That's right. Uh, creating ASG is free, but if you spin up uh, some expensive resources or instances and keep them running, uh, be ready to get fired with no retirement benefits. That was a joke. So you can provide new launch configurations to update your ASG configurations. And after you change the launch configuration for an auto scaling group, any new instances that are will be launched using the new configuration options. So you can monitor the CPU usage and disk reads and writes of your Amazon EC2 instances. That is a custom matrix as we discussed above. So there is one more question that comes into mind like is what do you need to do if you want to add an IAM role to the auto scaling group? This is something they can ask in the exam as well. So the first thing is in an auto scaling group, you must create a launch configuration or template, then choose an instance profile to associate with the instances. So basically an instance profile is a container for an IAM role that you can use to pass role information to an EC2 instance when the instance starts. I think you all are aware of what IAM role is. If you don't, please check the link in the playlist, but I can't resist myself. So in short, I'm going to tell you like IAM role is, let's suppose your EC2 instance wants to talk to S3. You can assign a S3 IAM role to your EC2 instance. So that gives permission for you to talk to other resources in AWS. If the instances are termed unhealthy by Elastic Load Balancer, auto scaling group will terminate and respin another instance for you. That's fair enough. If you have an EC2 auto scaling group, the ASG with running instances and you choose to delete the auto scaling group, the instances will be terminated and the auto scaling group will be deleted. This point is just very important. So we will iterate it once again so that you remember this. So if you have a EC2 auto scaling group with running instances and you choose to delete the auto scaling group, the instances will be terminated and the auto scaling group will be deleted as well. Moving on. So the EC2 auto scaling groups are regionally constructed. So they can span availability zones, but not AWS regions. There's one more thing that you need to always remember that use AWS auto scaling to manage scaling for multiple resources across multiple services. And AWS auto scaling supports only target tracking scaling policies. And you should use EC2 auto scaling. Remember, there is a clear difference between AWS auto scaling and EC2 auto scaling. And I want to tell you that you should use our EC2 auto scaling if you only need to scale Amazon EC2 auto scaling groups. Hope you remember the difference. Next is the default termination policy for ASG suggests that the older version of instance launch configuration will be terminated ahead of the newer ones in an availability zone. And always choose the one with the highest number of instances. So if we check in the example, let's suppose we have resources over two availability zones. Let's suppose we have resources over two availability zones, but one side we have three V1 instances and the other side we have two V2 and two V1 instances. So let's see which one does AWS delete. Yes, the one with the lower configuration, but what it smartly chose is that it considered the balance to maintain the number of instances between both of them and chose to delete the one which was of least preference. This is something that can be asked in the exam as well. So please be clear about this concept. Finally, we are at the last part of the episode, but mostly to a place where we recall what we have learned and learn something new that could help us with the exam. So the topic here is scaling cooldowns for Amazon EC2 auto scaling. So the cooldown period helps to ensure that your auto scaling group doesn't launch or terminate additional instances before the previous scaling activity takes place. You can as well configure the length of the time based on your instance warm up period and it can support cooldown periods when using simple scaling policies. There are two types of scaling. One is simple and the other one is step scaling. So in simple scaling, it waits for the cooldown period like 180 or 300 seconds to complete before resuming the scaling activity again. In step, 
the step scaling policies increase or decrease the current capacity of your auto scaling group based on a set of scaling adjustments known as step adjustments and when you manually scale your auto scaling group the default action is not to wait for the cooldown period but you can override the default and honor the cooldown period so the default cooldown period which is basically our simple scaling so the default cooldown period is applied when you create your auto scaling group its default value is 300 seconds so if you feel the default cooldown period of 300 seconds is too long you can make use of the scaling specific cooldown period of 180 seconds for your scale in policy which in turn reduces cost by allowing the group to scale in faster so if you see the following example here if the scaling is triggered it checks if the default cooldown is in effect like if we should wait for 300 seconds or not if yes then it will ignore the action it should take else it will go ahead and launch or terminate instances this is super cool so i hope this was informative and interesting and i hope you got the gist of it oh man that was a really long session i guess i hope it was informative and interesting at the same time it takes a lot of time and effort to make these slides and videos so your support means a lot to me so please subscribe to the channel and hit the like button and comment on what we can improve on and that would mean a world to me so i would like to thank all of you once again for us reaching 250 subscriber still a long way to go but we will get there so the next episode it's going to be a cracker it's all about storage so don't miss out on that that's all from my side today pytholic signing off